am so excited because my book, The Elegant and Edible Garden, is finally going to be released in April. And to celebrate, I'm going to be on the Talk Shop Live channel, March 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, to talk all about it, to visit with you, interact with you about gardening and this book in particular. You'll be able to pre-order a signed copy. We will be able to have a real conversation about gardening. So make sure to put it on your calendar now. We will make sure to notify you when the channel goes live. And again, that's March 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure to put it on your calendar now. I hope I see you then. Well, before we get started today, a couple of housekeeping items. Everyone needs to welcome Stuart back. He took a little mini vacation, and I did the last Wednesday walkabout solo. A number of you commented on my, my audio going in and out, and that's because Stuart wasn't here to support me. So, as always, it was Stuart's fault. <laughs> Secondly, um, you just saw a commercial about my appearing on Talk Shop Live. If you go to TalkShopLive.com, you can scroll across and you'll see my face and it will give you information about my appearance. And what I'm going to do is talk about the book. And it's going to be on March 7th. 6 Central Time, uh, 7 Eastern Time. You can buy an autographed copy while we talk about it. You guys, this is your opportunity to really interact with me. You can ask me questions. Um, we can have an exchange of just kind of just garden talk. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. So if you can mark it down on your calendar, because I would love, I would love to have your support and um, at least know a few people will show up. Um, secondly, and much more seriously, today when I came out to start working in the garden, it, it did not escape me how fortunate I am. How fortunate I am to be in my own home and being able to work in my own garden when so many people right now don't have that luxury. And I, it's not lost on me how, how much gratitude those of us who feel secure um, how, how grateful we should be for what we have. And along those lines, here is my first question of the day. If you would, I have started sharing on Instagram and I'll share in the community tab here, various links to different resources where you can help the Ukrainian people. And it's important to say that there are so many dislocated people right now. It's not just the Ukrainians. There are people all over the world who are had to leave their homes and they are forced to be away in some cases from their loved ones from their cherished homeland and if there are ways that we can be sensitive and help those who have been displaced then i hope we will take this opportunity to do that um, so i will be sharing lots of links and if you have any also reliable you know we all want to do our due diligence that these are really verified uh, charitable places where we can send our money and our resources, then please put those links in the comment below. Stuart, we, people can comment and put links in the comments. I believe that, I believe you can. So if you are aware of different ways that we can help, please include those. And then by all means, as you are commenting, make sure you read others' comments because you might find their information invaluable in terms of different ways we can help. And and then finally, um, someone, I was having a discussion with somebody and I said, oh, you know, I feel, I don't know, is it superficial, is it frivolous for us to be talking about gardening and things of that nature right now when so much of the world is hurting? And while I, I could see her point, I, I, I think that right now it's more important than ever that we get out in our gardens, that we find solace here, that we find comfort here, that we um, really are, are aware of just how grateful we are and that we need to share what we have in any way with others. So there is just my little heartfelt message to you guys that we just need to all step up and, and do what we can. So make sure to check out the comments below and check out where and how we might be able to be of some help. So, there you go. 
Well, I've got Stuart standing at a distance and he can start coming this way to kind of emphasize my point about my five garden strategies or how I strategize my pre-spring cleanup. Now again, I am no expert. There are so many different ways to do it. And obviously my question of the day, I wanna share how you guys tackle the magnitude of all there is to do to get ready for spring before you plant, before you really start, um, you know, just uh, spreading seeds or annuals or anything like that. You have to do a, a certain amount of just garden grooming and garden cleanup. And so this is how I tackle it and how I kind of strategize the enormity of the job. But again, I'm no expert. You guys share how you strategize. So number one, what people are going to see first, since I live in a neighborhood and I get tons of drive-by traffic, what people will see first is obviously my front yard and it's because those are the things that bloom first so that is my number one strategy i'm going to prioritize the areas that will be um, seen by the public enjoyed by others as they walk about and also those things that will bloom first that may not be the case for you guys you may live out in the country and your stat strategy for your garden cleanup might be completely different but for me, things are going to start accelerating pretty quickly. Bulbs are starting to come up, seedlings are starting to germinate, and I really want to make sure that most of that fresh foliage that comes out is erupting and there's not a lot of, of brown, dead, leafy um, litter around it. So that's how I'm prioritizing that. And here's kind of an example. You can see over here, on the east side near my drive, I haven't gotten to this area yet. I've still got lots of leaves and things in here that need to be cleaned up. Versus this side on the west where I've already cleaned out a good amount of the leaves and I have top dressed it with composted manure. So it looks a lot tidier and subs and consequently when the bulbs start coming up and things they're going to come up against a canvas that's a little bit more beautiful so this is another example here I've showed them to you many times but the hellebores now have been cleaned up some there was a, a heavy frost so I'll cut back more foliage but for the most part it's going to be flowering in an area that looks tidy and well-groomed. And also it will not only look well-groomed up close, it will look good from a distance. So for me, that's my number one strategy for prioritizing my cleanup. What is going to be seen uh, very publicly by others? And what can I do to enhance and beautify the things that are coming into bloom first? Now let's move on to my number two strategy. Well, here's my number two strategy. As you guys know, my garden and probably many of yours as well are divided up into what I consider to be garden rooms. This is kind of like the dining room. And over here, I refer to this as the bistro. And right now the weather is really beautiful. We're gonna have some warm days where we can sit outside, we can dine outside and we can enjoy the out of doors before the temperatures dip again or before that heat sets in ultimately this summer. So here's my number two strategy in prioritizing which rooms I clean first. And that is those rooms that we are going to use right now will get tidied up and groomed first. So yesterday I spent a good amount of time removing lots of the leaves, cutting back plants that were overgrown or brown and needed to get um, needed to get just a haircut so they'll start looking good a little bit later. I am not shearing or pruning my boxwood yet, but nevertheless, there was a lot of things that I could do to make this whole area look a lot tidier and a lot nicer so that when we sit outside, I can really enjoy the space without feeling like I need to constantly get up to do 
do some kind of cleanup. So consequently yesterday, I cleaned off my glass table. I shook out all of the seed heads and that kind of thing from inside the chairs. I started working over here in the bistro a little bit, tidying it up, sweeping gravel, putting it black back into place, deciding where I wanted to maybe position some of my plants. So this whole area right now looks a lot tidier, a lot cleaner, a lot more more kept because these are the spaces I hope to enjoy and use first. So that's my second strategy is I'm prioritizing cleanup based on the spaces I'm going to be using right now. Okay, number three. When I was in the Cotswolds visiting Rosemary Vary's absolutely incredible garden at Varnsley House, the caretaker there described what she considered kind of a, oh, a foundational concept in English gardening. And that was that the things that are, the garden spaces that are closer to the house tend to be more well-groomed, more formal, tidier, and require a little bit higher maintenance. Then as you got away from the house, areas became more natural and they even described them as an area that they considered to be the wilds. It was not as well groomed, it was much more natural and looked like it might look in nature. So that's another concept that I think about when I do my garden grooming and my garden cleanup pre-spring. I start close to the house and then I move my way out. So the areas that are right up against the back facade of my house or the front facade of my house will get tended first. The areas back in the potage, even though I will start working on them, I will do them later because those aren't areas that I'm seeing as much as I am these areas that are right near and contiguous kind of to my deck area. So here's an example of that. I'm starting to clean up not all because a lot of this leafy coverage will be a permanent mulch but i am going to remove some of it because as i'm doing my garden cleanup i'm looking for different things for example i'm going to cut back some of this ivy I'm addressing those things that need to be done. Look, I unearthed a piece of flagstone I can use. But I'm also going to treat this yew, this uh, blue atlas cedar, and the other evergreens in this area with some holly tone. So I'm going to pull back that leafy mulch, and in this whole space, I'm going to work in some of that evergreen food, that holly tone, because I noticed that after all of the problems we experienced last year from the ice storm and the Arctic blast, a lot of these plants really suffered. And last year I was so attentive to just reestablishing the form and replacing dead plants that I probably didn't do as much as I should have to really tend the plants that did not die and that were hanging on. So that's gonna be part of my emphasis this time of year and this season is to really take care of those survivors from last year. So I'm gonna start out working in this bed which is close to the living space that I cleaned up in my second strategy. And then I'm going to work my way out towards the back of the garden. Well, as gardeners, we're very aware of the fact that there is a window of opportunity to do almost any kind of garden activity. And one of the expressions I'm most fond of saying is that here in the South, there's only two seasons. There's before the heat and there's after the heat. And right now, I, gosh, Stuart, it feels like maybe it's close to 
75 to 80. Yesterday it got up to almost 80, which reminds me that the heat is going to be here before we know it, even though technically spring hasn't arrived and we still have some cold weather. But one of the things that I have a window of opportunity to do is to plant some of my cool season vegetables. And I'm going to be planting the different quadrants of my potage with leafy greens, spinach, some French breakfast radishes. And so consequently, I am prioritizing this space and that is my number four area that I am going to strategize. My strategy for cleanup is areas that I have a window of opportunity to plant. And that is these four quadrants. So what am I doing? I've cleaned up all of the leaves. I've top dressed this with some compost. I'm going to rough up the soil. And then I'm going to prep and plant these areas with cool season vegetables. So that is my fourth strategy for how I prioritize my garden chores and cleanup those things that just have a window of opportunity to get done before the heat arrives, the rain comes, or a cold blast comes. So prioritize your window of opportunities. Well, my last tip is based on keeping yourself kind of motivated. And for me, if I can see what progress I've made, then I am more likely to continue. So for me, it's helpful if I prioritize the cleanup of those areas that are close to where I will see them and where I can appreciate their beauty and their progress. So for me, it's areas like my porches, my side porch, my front porch, those areas that I pass by frequently and I can see that, oh, this window box still needs some work, but nevertheless, I've kind of cleaned it up and tidied it up so I feel like I've got a little bit of momentum going to continue with all of the other garden cleanup and chores that I have still to do. So for you, if you live out in the country or you live in something that other than a neighborhood like mine, you have might have those areas that you see every day as you pass by. It might be by your garage, it might be back um, by your pond, but those areas where you sit and enjoy them, but those spaces that you see frequently from both inside and outside. So for me, I need that added oomph of, okay, you've gotten a little bit done, you're making some progress, so now you can do some more. So for me, it's those kind of little motivational things that are within sight that I can see every day that give me the confidence and the momentum to continue on. So there you go. There's my five strategies for how I prioritize all of the cleanup, the pre-spring cleanup and some of the chores that there is to do. I want to know what your strategies are. So there you go. You guys, I hope the weather is nice where you are so you can get out and get started. Well, here you go. Here's my outfit of the day. My earrings, my cross earrings, I love these and I can't really remember where I got them. I think maybe Santa Fe, but I am not sure. My top is from Goodwill, originally from Nordstrom Rack. My little um, uh, scarf is from Color Blends. They sent me one of these when they sent me my bulb order and you guys pretty soon are going to be seeing all of my gorgeous Color Blends bulbs. At least I hope you will this spring. My britches are Land's End. I've had these forever and I frayed the bottom to kind of bring them into, into current times. My boots are Mary Boots, Chelsea Boots. I absolutely love these and if you guys want to check them out, they have all sorts of fun colors so you might want to do that. So there you go. There's my outfit.